it's not easy. You're going to be reshaping a lot of your thoughts, having these mind shifts, but eventually it gets to a point where you're doing so much in life and you're forgetting that you're actually sick that you stop and look around and be like, holy cow, I, I'm actually doing all these activities. How's it going guys? Miguel here with CFS Recovery. In this video, I'm gonna answer a question that I get asked a lot about and I've been getting asked this for many months now, so I feel like it's time to answer the question. But the question is, when did I realize that I was fully, fully recovered? It's a great question. The truth is, there was no aha moment where I realized that I was recovered. There's no moment where I felt like I actually arrived at recovery. And there's another video where I talk about there's no such thing as 100% recovered, which is up here. It's one of the first, you know, first dozen videos I did on this channel. But I want to break it down to you this way, right? So how recovery looks in terms of where your attention is at in the beginning. In the beginning, you are almost 100% focused on recovery. You're thinking about it 24-7. You know, recovery kind of consumes you because you're feeling tons of symptoms, tons of fatigue, there's no way to not focus on it. So it becomes kind of like the center of attention of your life and you actually build your life around recovering from CFS, right? So every single thing that you do in the back of your mind, you're thinking, how does this play into my recovery? From, you know, going to the washroom to brush your teeth. It's like, oh, am I brushing my teeth too long? Is it gonna make me tired? If you're at that level, right? Or it can be, should I take a shower today? I don't want to over push myself. Should I cook today? I don't want to over push myself. Should I go get the mail today or should I wait till tomorrow? Should I go do the laundry today or should I wait later in the week? So when you're making all of these daily decisions from the smallest things in the back of your mind, you're thinking, okay, how does this play into my recovery? And obviously that is needed in the beginning because you do need kind of a wake up call. You need to realize, okay, I need to do the right things. I need to have these mind shifts and focus on rewiring my thought patterns and my initial response, my immediate response to symptoms and fatigue and all of this stuff. You need to take yourself out of that emotional state and get into like a more logical state. And you do that by understanding the science of what's going on. Because when you understand everything, recovery, it becomes less of a mystery because it, it's almost like a formula, right? If you do this, this, and this, then you're gonna get better no matter what. But obviously in the beginning, it's, it's hard to just absorb that information. You need to kind of see proof that it actually works, right? So you're gonna prioritize recovery in the beginning. Of course, you have to. It's literally the top of the priority list. But as you get better, as you gain a little bit more energy, as you have a little bit less symptoms, your world starts to slowly expand and actually become bigger. And what do I mean by that? This is something we talk about in unit five and six in Recovery Jumpstart, right? We dive deep into this topic, but as you continue to improve, your confidence also grows, your mental confidence, right? In yourself, in your own body, you learn to gain trust with your body and your nervous system because you know that if you go out and get the mail, while it was once very difficult and hard, now it's just like, as simple as brushing your teeth. And there's different levels to recovery. So as you get better, you're able to do more activities. Maybe you're able to socialize more with friends on the phone or on Zoom, or maybe they can actually come over. Maybe you can actually meet up with them for lunch. Maybe you can go for longer walks, longer drives. You could do more activities at home. You can watch movies. You can actually participate in hobbies and passions and actually start to slowly shift from just recovering to actually living your life. And it doesn't happen overnight. There's like a transition that happens. So for me, when I got out of the hospital, my immediate focus was, okay, I have to recover, but I'm also going to try to enjoy a few things like being able to sit outside. Man, I, I haven't done that in so long. Like I would love to sit outside. So I focus on literally just sitting outside in the sun with my dog. And I was ecstatic that I could even make it a hundred steps outside my mom's apartment. And even before that, you know, it was being able to get into a wheelchair, then move from a wheelchair to a walker, then a walker to actually walking around again. They were like little stepping stones, but each stepping stone built a little more confidence in me. And I was able to focus off 
of 24 seven, just thinking about recovery to being able to actually enjoy the sun outside, look at the sky, look at the birds, look at the trees, look at the people walking by. After that, then I was able to cook a little bit more. I was able to take some nice baths and like cool showers and play a little bit of guitar and surf on YouTube. A lot of my attention, instead of it being solely just on recovery, it was being redirected to things that I actually enjoyed. And I was getting out of that survival state, right? Almost as if I was treading water, it's just staying afloat to actually being able to get out of the water and, and see windows of time where I almost forgot that I was sick, right? Even if it's just for like 30 seconds or a minute or five minutes, maybe when I'm talking with a friend at a restaurant, I was able to actually be present in that moment and enjoy it. And I forgot that I was actually sick for that small period of time. But over time, as the weeks and months go on, that window of time becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And so as that happens, as you gain confidence and move forward in your recovery, it is no longer at the top of your priority list because other things start to take its place, right? Instead of being absolute number one, your whole world, your whole life revolving around just recovery, it becomes number two. And maybe number one, you know, enjoying a hobby of yours. Maybe it's, you know, watching movies or hanging out with friends or, or talking to them or playing a video game or going back to work, right? Could be anything. And as you gain more energy, you're able to do more and more things. So maybe there's like socializing, there's hobbies, there's being able to do groceries, whatever, all these other activities and recovery gets pushed lower and lower and lower and lower on the priority list until it gets to that point where even just you doing regular things during the day, driving around, walking around the mall, um, walking to go get something, walking the dog, that in itself, just doing normal things, is making you stronger and you actually start recovering on autopilot. But until you get to that point, there has to be a lot of conscious effort to get you moving in the right direction. But once it's moving, it's kind of like a, a shuttle taking off for space. Most of the energy used up on like a space mission or a rocket mission, whatever, right, is in propelling that rocket into orbit shooting it up in the sky, going from a complete standstill to actually getting it in the air. That's where most of the energy is used. Well, similar to recovery, most of your focus and attention and energy has to go into the beginning because it's not easy. You're going to be reshaping a lot of your thoughts, having these mind shifts, but eventually it gets to a point where you're doing so much in life and you're forgetting that you're actually sick that you stop and look around and be like, holy cow, I I'm actually doing all these activities. And because it happens so slow, there won't be a flip that switches in your brain that goes like, holy cow, wow, today I'm recovered. No, it happens gradually over time. And for most people, especially for myself, at least this is what I've realized. I didn't realize I was fully recovered until I was doing all this stuff. I was running like multiple miles per week and exercising and working out. I think, you know, the belief was instilled in me like, I could not do this for the last seven or eight years. And I was doing this stuff before I got sick. And I was like, okay, well that must mean that I'm recovered. And the reason why I say, you know, there's no fully recovered is because we're always chasing our human potential. Even nowadays, I don't feel like I'm at like a hundred percent because I can get better daily. There are always things that I could do to improve my quality of life. I could sleep earlier. I could eat a little bit healthier. I could, you know, I, I could drink a little bit more water. Sometimes I forget. I could read a few more books. You know, I could take a few more cold showers a week. The human potential is something that we're always going to be fulfilling. So you never arrive at that destination, but you can get to a place where the actions that you're doing surpass what you were doing before you got sick. And that's a really good indicator that you pretty much beat your old self, right? So in life, you know, if you think of it like you're moving up the ranks, you're moving up the ranks, you can do this much activity right? When you got sick, you could do this much activity. If you can make a comeback and get healthy again and do this much activity, then you can be pretty confident that like, you know what you're doing, you know how to recover and you know how to get out of it. So if ever I get sick and I almost, I thought I was going back to square one because last summer, you know, I did the 75 hard challenge and I was working out for, I, I was supposed to work out for 75 days straight two times a day. So I went from working out about two times a week to working out 14 times a week, which is insane, right? I really wanted to see if I was fully recovered, right? Because I still had that mindset. What I didn't realize is that like, 
any normal person, you put that amount of stimulus on their body, they're going to get sick. And my friends were telling me, they're like, dude, slow down. Like, we don't even want to try that. And we've never gotten sick with what you had before. So you should be careful. But I was like, no, nah, you know, I know how to override my nervous system, this and that. So I put tons of stress on my body. And for about a week, I felt like I had crashed. Now, before you say, oh, Miguel, you were never really recovered then, you know, you, you relapsed this and that. Any normal person would have had horrible headaches and lots of symptoms and they would feel like a wreck. Luckily, I knew what was going on. I knew why I was feeling sick. I knew how to get out of it. So now I'm at the point where I'm fine now. I could go work out. I could go swim. And that just goes to show that at any point in time, if you put too much stress on the body, it's going to act up. It's going to have a survival response. It's going to lock down and trigger a bunch of symptoms and fatigue to save itself from you. So back to my point about arriving at recovery, like you never arrive at recovery. You just shift from surviving with this illness to actually thriving in life, right? So little by little, I was able to do more and more to the point where I was traveling. I was going on hikes, going up mountains. I was going on runs. And now I would say that my life is at a level that it has never been at before, to be honest, with everything that I'm doing. And most importantly, like the way I respond to stressful situations, you know, there's a lot of my plate between the YouTube videos and the Instagram posts. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a post going out every single day on this YouTube channel. And it's been like that for the last eight months. So for eight months, there was maybe five days where I missed a post, right? So that's a lot of my plate, but I've had to figure out how to get it done in the most efficient way possible and not stress about it. Now, my stress threshold is a lot higher than it ever was before, but that's because I've built that up and I know what to do if ever I kind of go backwards, kind of like I did last summer, right? So I can get back on track right away and then, you know, get back to whatever I was doing. For you, eventually you'll get to a point in your life where you will look around and go, you know, wow, I'm in a much better position mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally than even before I got sick. But you can't wait for that moment to come because it never just shows up. There's never one defining moment. It's more so a realization that, wow, my life is a lot better than what it used to be. So that's all I wanted to share in today's video. That's how I knew I was fully recovered or that I was back on track or surpassed where I was before when I know I'm able to handle way more things that I would not even be able to handle before I got sick. That's how I know I'm on the right track. And a lot of these lessons, the reason why I'm where I'm at today, the reason why I can deal with a lot of stressors is through recovery, through the lessons and skills I learned because recovery, it, it is a skill as well. Yes, there's information. There's like a playbook that I literally give people in recovery jumpstart and I guide them through how to get better. But at the end of the day, no one can do that for you. You can lead a horse to water, but can't make it drink. Similar to recovery, you can know all the information you would ever need to know. I've met a lot of people who know way more about this mitochondria and like the nervous system and all these things. I've met people like that who know way more than I do, but it's not the right information. And they're stuck because they're in like analysis paralysis. I've even had doctors um, applying to the program because they don't learn the stuff in medical school. This is like a different approach that my doctor taught me. I didn't learn it myself. I got it from a very wise doctor. Thankfully, I got paired up with him. You know, that's all I wanted to share with this video. You never arrive at recovery. The more you can focus on living your life versus just recovery, the faster it will be for you to get better. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. Make sure to comment down below one golden nugget that stuck out in this video, something you learned, something that clicked comment that down below because I read all of the comments on YouTube. I reply to every single one of them. And if you are looking for some extra help in your journey, then you can apply to this program that I've created, which helps people accelerate their recovery for CFS and really get their hypersensitive nervous system functioning in a more optimal state again. And always remember, you are just one mind shift away from living a life with thriving help. I'll see you in the next video.